Yeah, we're recording. Okay. So we're going to go in three, two, one. Lions Lounge Lockdown, episode 15. Dave Savage. Dave, thanks for joining us, mate. No problem, mate. Pleasure. Looking forward. Uh, as I said to you off, off, off screen, just before we started, you come very highly recommended, so no pressure. <laughs> we'll have a go, mate. We'll have a go. <laughs> Joined Millwall in 1994 uh, yep. to 1998, 133 appearances, six goals, uh, most notably a very famous one at Chelsea. Before we get into the interview, and we spoke again off camera, I just want to say before to the viewers, there might be stuff we missed, but don't hold it against us because in that four years, mate, you saw, you saw your fair share of managers, uh, players, um, ups, downs, uh, FA Cup runs, administration. So we'll, we'll try and cover it all. Yeah, yeah, and, no uh, problem, mate. We'll try and get through it. So, you obviously joined in 1994. Big Mick McCarthy uh, sold the Millwall dream to you. How did he do yeah. that? I'll tell you to be honest, mate. He didn't. He didn't really have to deal with selling. So I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd gone back home after a, a, an apprenticeship at Brighton, Brighton and Albion. Albion. So they, they'd gone in. They'd nearly gone bust, Brighton. Um, so all the apprentices and everybody got released. So I'd gone home for a year. And to be honest with you, with, with the intentions, I thought I can go home and, and earn a few quid playing back in Ireland and sort of maybe have a decent career back there. So I wasn't sort of thinking, it, it, you know, I could, I could have a crack at it again. But uh, I, had a, I had a pretty good season back there and, and, and got the divisional player of the year. And, 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 and I, I, got, I got a phone call to say, Millwall, I want to have a look at you. So I came over, played against QPR in a resi game. Um, and, they, and they offered me, a, I think it was only a year contract after that, offered me a year. But to be honest with you, mate, I'd, 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 I'd have signed a six month thing. I'd, 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 I'd have come to, you know, they just paid me expenses. I'd, I'd have come just, you know, for another, yeah, for another yeah, crack yeah. at it. So it didn't really need much selling. But I mean, it was, it was unbelievable quality at, at the club at the time. It was, it, there were some really, really good players. So you could, when I was on trial, I trained a couple of times at the force team. It was like, you know, it, it, and they just got beaten in the playoffs the year before. So right, you know, yeah. still, still the, it was still the core of that that team that were there. You know, I thought I fucking forced me way in here. Yeah, so it didn't really need much um, need much selling, mate. It was a really good team. The re- reps were a very, very good team, um, and and I was just desperate to get back playing, desperate to get back and have another crack at it. Yes, you came over, um, quickly established yourself as a first team player. A time at a club when there was there was so many players at that club, so many players, a, a big Irish contingent as well when you got there. Yeah, 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 yeah. K- uh, Kenny, Kenny, Tony, Mac, uh, Mark. Um, yeah, so we, it was it was it was quite easy to set. It was good lads as well, mate. It was it was quite easy to to, to sort of acclimatise in. Um, obviously, with them lads there, but they had a culture where they'd go and have a beer, and you know, you quite quite easily to integrate in pre-season. I played. I mean, there was some high-profile pre-season. We played Porto. Uh, I think it was. Real Social that it might be at the den like so I was playing against junior football teams like four months earlier and yeah. I'm, you know I'm rolling out against Real Social dad and things like you know it was, it was really you know it was a pinch yourself time like so um but yeah some, some really good lads at the club and, and settled in really well I say me and Mark became pretty close obviously similar type of age so so yeah it climatized really well early on yeah what was your first impressions of London? What was it like for you? Was it a big difference from from uh, from Longford Town? Well, I, I played for Longford Town, but I was I was I'm actually a Dublin boy, so so I, I I've, I'm not far outside the the city centre. So, but it was still it's still a much it was a much different vibe than, than Dublin. You know, Dublin sort of um, it was pretty laid back in terms of you know, and you, you, there was now London was like a million miles an hour. You know, you, you go in and and it, it, there was a different different type of banter and stuff like that. You know, it was quite coarse. You know, like coming across. I mean, I'd been I'd been an apprentice, but it was nothing like the banter at a London club. Like it was, you know, what I mean, it was it was another level. So um, <laughs> yeah, a changing room was like yeah, you know, every everyone like you, you Ben in there, you know, Alex, Andy, Roberts, you know, Roy, now you look proper and they they they'd been around. So you know, them sort of coming from that generation of you know, so it was like, you know, you had to be sort of pretty thick skinned in there, like you know, I didn't. Obviously, coming over from Ireland, my my club, I got it a lot, you know. <laughs> I was only on trial. I was like. <laughs> oh my God. It was like, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, it was good. It integrated really well. So, yeah, it was, uh, it, it, it was, it was quite easy to sort of find your way in. The year before you came, we just missed out on the playoffs. Yeah. Um, and then the year you came was obviously the, what was the expectation? Was we expecting to go close again? Ninety four, ninety five. That would have been, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, it, it was, and I think 
for, for long, I mean, it, 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 it's obviously a long time ago now, but I think for, I think for large parts of the season, we, we were in and amongst, the, and maybe, it, so, obviously the cup runs were in amongst that, but I think we were sort of maybe in and around the shake-up in, in, in January, February, March. I'm, I'm not, I'm not too sure. We had, we had a, we had a, we had a bad start. I remember, we had it. No, we, we won, we won at home. We drew away. We won at home, and then we went on a really, we went on a really poor run of form. You know, li- leading up before the cup run. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was funny because I remember Mick, Mick, Mick organ or Mick took us up to the West End. We organized. He said, "Look." So we're getting out, you know. We, we, we've had a, we had a, we lost a couple of games. We're going out together. So I was okay. We went up to the. I can't remember the bar. Anyway, we're in the West End, and uh, one of the lads. I can't remember who it was. Something happened. Something happened about. I think I think there was a, a girl going up the stairs towards the toilets, and one of the lads went, Wee! you know, like she had she had a skirt on. Or something like it was something happened like that. But she come back down and she told her boyfriend. Oh no! And they're, and they're, they're my band. There's, there's there's nine or ten of them in the bar. So. He's come over and effing and blood, fucking get out of that. So a couple of lads are going, what the fuck are you talking about? So yeah, I can have an outside that. So anyway, Mick came down and said, went over to Troy and squared it with the geezer, you know, to sort it out and say, look, lads have lads on the night out, had a, had a few beers and, you know, nah, bollocks. We, we, you know, we're sort of having it, but you won't, you won't having it. So <laughs> funny so Mick came back over and went, look, I ain't having it. If it goes off outside, we're all in it together. So I'm saying, what? <laughs> I'm, a professional, I'm a professional football club, but it's the day before social media and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So you wouldn't get. I'm thinking, going to be going at it out and the cobbles out. And, you know, like, hey, so, so I'm like, this is happening. Like, you know, so the lads are still looking. So anyway. The geezers come out and it, it got sorted in the end. But that was the type of that was the type of atmosphere at the at club. You know, if it's if it's going off, it's like going morning, off together. Morning. Yeah, we, we're all in. Like nobody's, you know. So, but it was like, you know, you have a perception of a football club, where you have like, you know, a, it, it, that that's what it would have been like everywhere. Real, real togetherness. Do you know what I mean? It, it was yeah. a, it was an eye opener. You know, to sort of think like that that could have happened. You know, I think we were willing to go on have a tear up on the street. Like, it was like, it was, like, it was, it was willing to lead the charge there. But well, there was a few in there, mate. Like, Rhino, mate. Rhino, you know, you'd Rhino. Uh, I don't, th- I don't think, I don't think Pat was there. Uh, Gavin McGuire might have been still there. There was a few, mate, that could look after themselves. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you wouldn't have fell short, mate, and <laughs> went off up there. But uh, yeah, it never happened. But yeah, we had a few. There was a, there was a few, a few tough ones there, mate. You know, there was like mm. lad, lads who, lads who'd been, been the course and 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 who could, who could look after themselves, like. So you came to the club in 94, 95, 93, 94, we went close. And I think we was expected to go close again, which we didn't. We ended up finishing 12th. But the season will always be obviously remembered uh, in Millwall folklore for the for the FA Cup run. Um, but before that, I, I'm just asking you a question because it says also, I don't remember this, maybe because obviously the FA Cup run so etched in my memory. We did well in the uh, League Cup, but not in the Forest at home or something, didn't we? Do you know what, Dan? That, that, that's, that's probably the biggest... Disappointment for me in that season because we, we we lost to Swindon, right in the quarter final, and we I think we beaten Swindon already. They they weren't doing fantastic. They they weren't doing particularly well. That was a, for me when I look back at that was a real opportunity to get to a semi final of a of a major competition. I'm, I'm I remember going up there. We fully expected you know maybe maybe with an eye on it you know you know semi final of a major competition here, and um they do, they done us convinced they done us three one um mm. and. You know, it was a funny story about that night, actually. Do you remember, do you remember Fjortov, the centre forward? Yeah, no, Fjortov. Yeah, no, Fjortov. He used to do the aeroplane celebration. Yeah. He, he scored a goal. And I don't know whether he meant to cross it or not. He, 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 done a, he was out wide and he'd done a little bit of magic. And, he, and he, he almost like he crossed it in, but it bent in and it curled in over Casey's head in the top corner. And he'd done this celebration in front of the dugout. Mick was spitting feathers like so. We, we, we've come in at half time. And Mick's obviously done the team talk about getting back into it. And then he's gone. And by the way, if anyone gets half a chance, fucking get through him. Fucking let him have one. So we've gone out on the pitch. There's, there's a lot of things that Mark Kennedy can do pretty well. Tackling's not fucking one of them. Yeah. So he was over by the dugout, Fjortoff, near the Swindon dugout. And he's passed it, but so late to tackle. Mark's come flying in. Up, upended him. He's gone up in the end, and Mark slid off the pitch. And Steve McMahon has got up to 
to get hold of them. So with that mix out, Stewart are on, old Bill, there's like a med players are in. I'll never, never forget it. Mick had a hold of him like that, up by the collar. And he was ragging him a bit. And he said to him, me and you in your fucking office, lock the door, best man walks out. And I, I, I tell you what, mate, it, I've, I've never seen, he, he was scared. Stephen Mann's a bit of a hard man, had reputation. He was scared, yeah. mate. He was like, oh, mate, you know, look. <laughs> but Mick is gone. The only old glaze over. <laughs> He's gone, <laughs> God, absolutely, it's gone. Oh, mate, he was, it was going, mate. The, it was old Bill pulling them off. He was... Fucking brilliant. So, so yeah, obviously, and then that was a disappointing turnout in the League Cup, but the FA yeah. Cup was just was just a dream. The Arsenal game, uh, the home game, did you play? Because I don't think you, you didn't play at Highbury, did you? Played in the home game. Home yeah. game was pretty non-event, really. I can't remember m- much happening in the, in, in the home game. Uh, I was on the bench in the away game. I come on. Do you know what, mate? I had a chance when I come on. And you know you look back at look back at things because the FA Cup for me was when I was a, when I was a kid growing up. I don't know whether you Dan probably come to when you were a teenager that was starting to probably lose its. Oh, it's massive! Uh, it's massive. It's massive. You missed that, mate. Like, so yeah. much. Yeah. When, I, when I was a kid, it was. It, I mean, I can remember more about FA Cups as a kid than I, than I can about league wins right. and stuff like that. So it was it was huge for me, and uh, I remember turning up at Highbury because the you old know, Highbury is a magnificent stadium. There's something magical about that, you know, the, the history of it. And I had a chance towards the end, and I, I went down, and I, I got caught between crossing it, and I pulled it wide in the end, and I was I was fuming after. I thought, many chances are you going to get to score? <laughs> I scored fucking two weeks later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I was I, I thought that's it. You'll never get another chance to score at you know at a big stadium, a big ground. I was I was livid with myself. I should have done what Sparky done. I could put my laces through it. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. um, but yeah, no, I was I was I was livid. I thought, and then obviously two weeks later we get to go to the bridge and. Or a month later, because it was a replay. Yeah, obviously, again, again, the home game against Chelsea was pretty much non-eventful, wasn't it? Yeah. And then yeah. the away game, um, I've been posting that a lot, actually, on social media today. And it is an iconic time, an iconic kit, an iconic goal. Dimitri Corrine probably should have saved it, but we won't go into yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one nil down, Mark Steen scores. Um, and then, yeah, you take over. You tell us more from what you remember of the uh, the game and the goal. Yeah. Uh... The goal, the goal I, I think, I remember, they had, they had possession and they give it away cheaply and it, it, it made its way out to Ben. I think it was Ben on the, ben on the left-hand side. Yeah. And um, he, just, he just fired it across and it went through. I think, I think Beardy might have had a swing at it or something and, and it found its way to me. I was, I, and I was just, because it wasn't, you're right, it wasn't a great cut, but I was just so concentrated on getting something on it and getting it on target, you mm-hmm. know, instead of slashing at it and swiping at it and just make him make a save and, to be fair, a keeper, a Premiership keeper, I call it, should should save it. But it's managed to find its way in, and the the, the, the celebration that, that behind the goal is like when I mean, that could be anywhere in the world. If you have a look at that, that could be Rio, Argentina. That, that you know, know. Stand as well at the time. Oh, it was like there's just bodies on bodies, and it was like it was it it it, it was it was surreal to to because like you say, six months earlier, I, I was probably playing in an FAI Cup game in front mm-hmm. of three hundred people. That's a good ball by Richard to Thatcher. And it's in by Savage. Well, they've well deserved it, Millwall. Really good comeback. Chelsea had the lead for just eight minutes. Thatcher's cross seemed to be people just waiting to get somebody else to put it in. It fell to Savage and off Karin. You scored two goals that night, obviously. You scored yeah. the first... It was your first penalty. Yeah. First yeah. penalty. Sent the keeper the wrong way. Yeah. Well, I went down. I don't know whether I went down too early or the referee got caught. So I went down and the referee got called away to deal with something. So I was stood there for a couple of minutes and I was thinking, oh, I can never done the right thing. <laughs> I can put me on the force. They shed it and they were giving me all sorts of penalties like... And then, and then he come back, and I just, I just made me mind up pretty early that I, that's what I was going to do, you mm-hmm. know, find that corner and try giving the eyes a bit. But the penalties that night were unbelievable. Oh, unbelievable. Oh, Except oh, oh, rhinos, substantial. So yeah, really good, really good. And then obviously, I mean, there was carnage after. There was, there was. I mean, we got, we, we were in there till must have been half twelve. And when we come out, it was like, you ever see the footage from Belfast in the 70s and stuff like that? You know, like glass and debris everywhere and smoke and car. It was, it was like that. Yeah. It was like, 
going on here? Look. But it was funny that 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 night I went back to I used to have drink a beer was called the Duke of Albany down by Colblow Lane. I went, I've oh, heard a lot of people oh, put in the comments. He was always first one back there before before the fans sometimes. But, but so the punters used to come in there. So it, it, Dickie, an Irish boy, used to own it. Uh, Irish lad used to own it. So he used to get down. And he, he said to me, uh, "I'll come come back and have a beer after the game." So I was thinking it's after it was one o'clock now. So I rang up Tony Mack. I said, what, what are you doing? He's like, oh, Jim Palace, you fancy the gym? You know, and I said, I, 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 said, I told Dick I'd go for a beer. He said, one o'clock in the morning. I said, so we go and have a look, and if not, we'll the gym palace. So we pulled in down at the Duke of Albany, pitch, it's in the residential, pitch black now, and we pulled the car up, lights, lights are off in the pub, you see a silhouette, and the kitchen light was on. So I went up to the door, and I knocked at the door. I hear, a couple, I hear a couple of voices, you know, like, I thought, maybe Dick's having a beer with a couple of mates. And so I so see a silhouette come to the door, and he, he's opened the door. And as I've gone in, I'm not joking, mate, it was wall-to-wall Millwall. <laughs> wall-to-wall Millwall. And I've gone in. Ah, no one likes it. <laughs> I just just can't rip God. You sit me in there at about six o'clock in the morning, mate. Well, I didn't buy a beer. It was brilliant. And I was singing. And I was like, how, how the police, how the old bill never came or anything. But, yeah, brilliant, brilliant night. Uh, yeah, what, was, what were other interactions did you have with fans? Did you, did you have a good, you had a good rapport with the fans? Yeah, I mean, like, look, you, you know what Millwall's like as a club, mate. They, 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 they're black or white. You know, if it's going well, they'll tell you you're doing well. If it's not going well, they'll tell you it's shit. And, you know, it, it, it was the, the four seasons, brilliant. I hadn't got a problem. We really we got on really well. And I, li- I, li- I stayed in Bermondsey. I was around Bermondsey. You know, I, li- I lived in there. So, oh, right. uh, yeah, so I, I, I mean, I used to come home after games. You know, you'd have to, <laughs> if you got beat. <laughs> you know, like, the, the money in the game now, they stick them all out in Keston Park. and not Yeah, over the, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I, I was there for a bit. So I was, I was in and around it a lot and, you know, seeing a lot of the fans. I used to, I say, I used to drink down at the, the, the Duke and they all went back there afterwards. So, I think I think they sort of had a bit of respect because I went back there after we got beat and you know I got a bit of stick I got a bit of stick but you know I'd have, I'd have a beer in there so I think they I think the ones the ones down there certainly I never had any I never had any real bother mate I mean I've seen instances down there where you know it's been I mean they raided the players by one one time down there and it was it was I tell you we played Colchester in an LDV vans game so we lost three two and it was when the Scottish boys were there and. Uh, yeah. We used to have a security guard down on the before you come into the ground, then one on the players by a door. And then with the radio went, so, <laughs> broke through, get the players out. <laughs> so, honestly, mate, I'd not I'd not seen when I turned around. I could Scottish lads had gone down the stairs. The door, the door was swinging. And it was like, so anyway, I thought, do you know what? They're like, these these guys are paying into the ground and that. So I stayed at the bar, mate. I thought, do you know what? I'll go have a chat with these fellas. And, you know, they, they, they're paying the money. And that, and that looks shit running out of a back door, you know? Yeah. yeah. So the guys come in, seven or eight in a mob and I can come, come up and I'm thinking, oh, fuck, do you know what I mean? What's that? I was, I was funny enough, I was with Bobby Bowery. And I was thinking, so they come up now. Where, <laughs> where the fuck are them Scottish lads? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh. and, 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 mate, they talked it out and they, General frustration, mate. It was around the time of, I, th- I think it might be the time around the administration, and it wasn't going well. And mm. they seen their club mate in a bad place. Do you know what I mean? And it, it, it's mm. pretty understandable. But they 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 were fine, mate. And you know we, we need to see more and blah blah blah. And 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 it, and it, and it was fine. But yeah, ne- ne- never had an issue, mate. Never had a real issue. There was there was good times. There was bad times. There was highs and lows with it. You know, like mm. like like most football clubs. Well, I say they probably had a lot more respect for you for standing your ground and having a chat instead of a uh, backdoor in it like the odd man Davy Sinclair. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they went, mate. They, they, they were gone. They were gone. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's talk more about, say, the good times are great and the football's great. And we do love that, obviously, and, and, and all respect to you because you scored an iconic goal for me all. But let's talk about the sheer vast amount of players, but also the actual characters of the people. You know, the younger boys, you have Mark Beard. Ben Thatcher, uh, Mark Kennedy said you was good friends with uh, Kenny Cunningham, obviously Irish contingent, Tony McCarthy. What was what, what are these characters like? Uh, you, you, I mean, you've, pro- you've probably been told a lot of. This. I mean, look, Ben, Ben was Ben was a different one. You know, like Ben was Ben was there, there was nothing off limits with Ben. You know, there was there really. Well, I mean, there's no opener for me because he was, he was only a young kid. Mm. And mate, he was like, some, I mean, even even staff. Usually staff are sort of, 
out of loop, you know, do what you want, cup lads gears up and all that, but start, start for sort of, but he was, we, <laughs> we, we went, we went to a game one time, I think it was Stoke away or something, and we went for a uh, morning walk, morning of the game, pissing down the rain, and um, we was in this park, and he, He'd come across a tennis ball on the floor and it was like fucking soaking wet. It's like dog had been at it. It was like ragged. And the, the, the weight of it, mate, it was <laughs> Mick and Taff and you know, all the staff are like about 50, 60 yards up there. So he's got this ball and hiked it down there. And it's clocked Taff, Ian Evans, right in the, And mate, you could you could tell from where we were the velocity of it because his head proper went like that. Like, <laughs> so he's He's, he's turned around and he's come marching back. He's, he's spitting feathers. He's, he's, he's got his ball in his hand. He's, he's come back. He's come back to the group. He's like, fuck, who, who the fuck's done that? You've had the bollocks to throw it. Have the bollocks to stand. <laughs> and as he's as he's talking, all his shit is dripping off his neck. From <laughs> where it's hit him. And you know when you're in school and the teacher and you're like, yeah, you the, lads, mate, of- the lads were trying like trying not to think and he's, he's getting worse he's going worse and all this stuff is running down his neck and I just kept looking at the ball the ball's like hanging to me but, but that's what I'm saying mate no one else would have done that no one else would have, would have done it like you know it's, it's just yeah. didn't, not a filter where in your mind it's that, that switch in him where he just, we could, what, could he not keep himself occupied but he just he sounds a little I, like a gazer in a way like we just a complete loose cannon I, I, just there's a filter in everyone's head you, you, you'd probably think it's something you'd go I'd love to do that. Be funny, but fuck, you know, you know that. Like he, he hadn't got that. No, I'm not doing it. He, he, he doesn't know my. Do you remember James O'Connor? Deso. Yes. He, James. He, he, he was in the squad. Another one in the away game. And I don't know whether he actually knocked at his hotel door and done this. I have got him coming around the corner. He had a fucking fire extinguisher, and he's literally, mate, from like two feet away. I can let it go. And he took his eye out. <laughs> And he, he, that was what ended his career, was it? No, he couldn't, play the, he couldn't play the next day. He, and I was like, his eye was like that. He, oh, he no, play, he couldn't yeah, play. Yeah, he couldn't play. No, proper like... Pff, in this, in this, you see the... Pre- but that's what I'm saying, mate. I don't, I don't think there was any maliciousness in it, mate. In his mind, I think he thought, this will be funny. You know, it's just... It's, it's, yeah. But yeah, mate, different. Different, different type of... Different type of crazy. Good what lad, though. Some, like that. What about some of the... Um, some random foreign imports at that time. Obviously, I've, dis- I've discussed the Americans. Another name that cropped up earlier when I researched it, I've completely forgotten about. Like Alistair Edwards. What people are that like? Did they get involved in the banter or did they? No, nah, very quiet, mate. Stuff? Yeah, very quiet. Didn't I, I? I don't know whether he was he was there for that long, Alistair. Mm. I know he played. I know he played a high, uh, played a hybrid and stuff, but mm. I, I, I can't remember. Yeah, they kept it, different cultures down, isn't it? You know, like mm. people come from like the Americans and stuff like that. There's certain certain culture and how they did. They, they still turned up for nights that were organised and stuff like that, but, you know, didn't have a beer or, or stuff like that. But, yeah, they, different cultural things, mate. They were fairly fairly quiet, but good lads, like Casey and stuff, they, decent lads, you sit and have a chat with them and that, but they just weren't, they just weren't on that sort of level of things, how, how yeah. it was, you know. I mean, it's all, it's all, it's all changed now. The game's very different now. You wouldn't get, um, you know, them, them sort of you know, the Tuesday clubs and, and and stuff like that, you know, but... You have a good few Tuesday clubs, yeah? Eh, uh, yeah, we did. I mean, it was it was always, a, you'd never do it on a, you know, if, there was, if, if it was in a block of games and stuff, that's it. you'd always do it. You'd have your day off and then you'd be in tours day and you'd train properly on Friday. You know, it was always, it was never done to the detriment of your fitness or anything like that, you know, because you, yeah. you'd, be, you'd be pulled up on that, you know, if you weren't, you know, if you weren't looking sharp or you weren't doing the things, you'd be pulled up and stuff like that. So you'd always get, You'd always get a, a session, and lads usually go out together and, and have a few beers. But it, I think that was most football clubs at that time, Dan. It wouldn't be just exclusive to us, you know. Most football clubs would have it. So the drinking culture's gone out of it now, big time. But back then, it was it was all part of it, wasn't it? Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I didn't know any different. And, and you know, I mean, to be fair, the, the, I'll give him his deal. The only one, Kenny Cunningham, was years ahead of what you know. What I mean, Ken didn't drink. And he'd have his he'd have his food in the changing room at half time and you know and, and, and eating properly and, and he was there was no one else doing that. I mean, the lads used to rip the arse out of him, like, do you know what I mean? He'd, 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 he'd open his little tin foil with his, you know, his thing like, fuck you doing like that. But but it, but he was he, he reaped the rewards of that time. He was fit, super fit. You know, he was always out after training and stuff like that. And he he, he reaped the rewards of that in the end, you know, he got his move mm-hmm. and, and had a really good career. 
He had some, um, so we had some random imports, but we also had some iconic players at the time. Uh, Ryan Obi said, Ben Thatcher, obviously, Mark Kennedy went on to become big names for the club. What about um, Alex Ray? Because obviously Alex Ray used to like a used to like a log. I bet he was um, leading the charge with you and him for the Tuesday club to the nights out. But good, but first of all, brilliant player, Alex. What, what, a, player. what a player! One of the he, he, Alex is one of the best players I've ever played with mm. he, throughout an army career. Really good player. Um, and I think, I think it might be right in saying he's not. He's he's he's, he's knocked it on the head, Al, hasn't he? He's not. Um, yeah. So he, he he obviously had obviously had a couple of problems with it, which he probably didn't realise at the time. Um, but again, he was he was always one down that he, like it never it never affected. He, was, he always trained. You know, he always he was, he was a fit lad, midfield. He, played, he was up and down. You know, he always said. But yeah, they would they, they would have. I mean, probably the, more exclusively. Sometimes you'd always have the nights out. You know, together, but there was sort of maybe him and Andy and, and, and Ben would, it, it, as a regular crew, would go out. Whereas maybe me and Sparky and, and Mark and stuff like that would probably go out. But when you'd have your organised one, they'd all go out together. So, mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have said at the time you'd notice an extraordinary. You, I wouldn't have never thought, oh, he's got a problem in. You know, because because you know you'd have a few beers on a Saturday after the game, and then maybe there'd be a Tuesday club. But I, I, you know, you'd never notice that he'd come in on a, a Tuesday or a Friday, and he'd be, he'd be hanging us. You know, so I, I was quite surprised when transpired that he was, you know, he was having yeah. some, some issues. You think we've just, we've got the Irish boys the most, Mark Kennedy and, and boys like that. Was they was they the ones you were sort of closest to at the club? Yeah, me and me and Mark were, were, were quite close. Uh, but, but but Ben Ben and Mark were close and Beardy as well. You know they, they used to have Ken, Kenny. There was obviously Kenny didn't drink, so Ken was he still turned up in the night out with drive and stuff like that. Uh, Tony, but yeah, it was pr probably probably more with uh, with Mark in that first year, um, and then yeah. So the rest, I mean, it was it was it was, a, it was a good group to be fair. It was a good group of lads. So you you, you sort of I'd be wished if the first year probably be me and Mark would be you know most of the time we go and have a beer we we'd go out together. Unbelievable left foot. It, 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 the, the surprising thing about me, Dan, was his, his, his mindset for a young kid, and there was a few of them. Like, and, and probably that's credit to Tom Wally. I don't know the like the, the mentality. It's difficult to play at Millwall. You know, mm. I know they like one of their own and stuff like that coming through, but it's 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 a difficult place to be if it's if it if it's not going well. And you have to have a certain type of character and mindset to play there. But they were all like him, Beardy, Mark. Nothing seemed to to phase them in terms of playing and stuff like that. It was just you know. Just make a mistake, go again, miss a shot. I'll have another one. I'll get the mindset side of it was really, really impressive with the young lads that came through there. Right, now, two other characters I want to ask you about before we move on to the uh, the '95, the dreaded '95, '96 season. Just like to Tony Witter and um, Dave Mitchell, what were they like as char characters? I say because I always say to the other players, there was no social media then. There was no interviews. Yeah. you didn't get to feel what they was like as characters. Yeah, which which was a good lad. Which 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 was like yeah. You know, always integrated with everyone, and that wouldn't have been a wouldn't have been a massive, you know, drink drinking one for the night. So if there was if there was something about we organised, they'd be there. Um, a little bit eccentric tone, you know. He like, you know, he had he had his certain he had his certain ways of doing things, and certain. You, do you know? Do you know the worst thing was about him? He was so quick. He, he used to he used to he used to like to get himself into a race. <laughs> so. I mean, I, I, this is my opinion. I mean, he, he might say to me, bollocks, but I used to look sometimes and he, he you know, I'd almost give people a yard or a level and I'll catch him. And I used to think, you'd make it so easy for yourself just to give yourself a couple of yards or something. But he used, <laughs> he used, to, he used, to, he used to like, you know, get, and then the crowd would go, oh, Tony, we know you make a tackle at the end. And, but there was a yeah, couple of times yeah. it'd be somebody just as quick and it, we wouldn't catch him, you know, <laughs> like Dean Sturridge or something, give him a yard and he'll fucking score. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, he was quite prone to a mistake, but he always used to recover, didn't he? Because he was uh, like a fucking roadrunner. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. He was good, great lad, Tony, a lot of time for Tony. Dave, Dave was uh, Dave was pretty quiet, um, you know, experienced pro. Dave, Dave was Dave was was fairly quiet. He'd probably be, I don't know whether him and Casey room together or something like that. You know, they, they, that 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 sort of that sort of crew, Johnny Kerr and stuff like that. So they'd, um, yeah, it wouldn't be but sort of your younger lads. You'd sort of that crew from sort of. The younger lads are 18, 19, 20. Alex, and they were 20, 23, 24. And obviously, Rhino, Rhino used to jump in on the back of that. Rhino used to be, you know, as well. <laughs> the father figure, the father figure for the group. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. You, um, you just said there about uh, Dave Mitchell rooming with Casey Keller. Who did you room with on away games? I was with, I was with Mark uh, for the first year. 
Um, and then obviously he, he got sold in the March. I, I can't remember the second year. I know, I know it was with Ricky Newman after a while. Oh, but Mark, yeah, yeah. But Mark, I've heard, I've heard some good stories on Ricky. Oh, Not shy of leaving a log in the toilets for the water. No, 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 very different, mate. Just, yeah, yeah, just it, yeah, yeah, dirty man, mate. Just you know, the set net again. I mean, I'll be, I know you're rooming and you're two lads and stuff like that, but you know, and it, and it, and I'm sure down at dinner and that he'd eat the. The shittest thing to, to, to you know, like to, to, <laughs> to destroy the toilet, you know, it, it was like, oh, different, but uh, yeah, but it's, it's funny what about funny what about Mark. First, first year we were, we were rooming together, we, we, I think we were up at Derby away, and I, I normally I normally go to bed about, about half ten, you know, get, get up at eight, nine, go for your breakfast and stuff, and it, it went, went to sleep, turned off the lights at half, half ten, quarter to eleven, and uh. I had a fucking I had a lamp going back on again. This was about half eleven, and the, the phone receiver coming up, and he, he rang down to reception. Uh, can you? I oh, oh, some room service. Uh, I'll have a ham and cheese toasty, a side of chips, bowl of ice cream, and a pint of coke. <laughs> fucking in the in, yeah yeah. This was like half eleven. So I, thought, I said, so what are you doing? Oh, I'm hungry. I? I said, oh mate, you know, is he sleeping in my game tomorrow? Yeah yeah yeah, be all right. So anyway, about half twelve. Not goes in the door. My bed was closest to the door. He was his his bed was next to the window. He said, oh, "Go and go and get a grub for us." We went, yeah, for go me bed. I opened the door. There's fucking Mick McCarthy stood there with try try his stuff. So, I'm looking, he's gone. Uh, fucking Norton actually went. Hurry up, fucking eat that, you fucking idiot, and make sure you, and, and uh, make sure you have a good game tomorrow. Something like that. And I've turned around. And he's fucking swiveled over in the bed like that, pretending to be asleep. But he's like, you take the bullet. I took a bullet for it, mate. Yeah, so I've got this bowl of ice cream in my hand. Fuck. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I can't remember how we got on the next day, but fuck, yeah, it was less oh, than that, oh. mate. Jesus Christ, that's yeah, fucking brilliant yeah. from, that's brilliant from Mick when he was quite a character, wasn't he, Mick? Oh, uh, Mick was, Mick was, uh, Mick was, uh, he's, he was straight down the middle, Mick. You know, he was he, he was honest. I, I thought he kept that squad together pretty. It's hard to manage a squad with the lads being in and out of the team and stuff like that. Big but, squad as well, wasn't it? Big squad. Yeah, 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 was. yeah. But he was. He, I, I always found him dead straight, dead honest. You know, there was there was there was no uh, there was no grey areas with Mick. You know, if, if you weren't in the team, he'd call you and tell you what you want in the team. You weren't doing this, you weren't doing that. Um, hard man. You know, he was he was he, he had the respect of everybody in there. Um. And yeah, yeah, looked after the players. Did did look after his players and stuff like would that. He but give you a, would he give you a yard sometimes? Like, like for instance, things like that. He could have lost his head. Couldn't he? Got fucking eating this shit this late at night. Would, would he give you a yard if he knew you was fucking going to perform the next day? Or yeah, yeah, and 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 stuff like he he, he knew the lads. Had, you know, there was certain lads that have a beer on a Tuesday and stuff like that. And, and you know, as long as you were right Thursday, and he, you know, if if you know, even for me early on going back to Ireland and stuff like that, you know, yeah, have a Monday off. And you know, he was he, he was good like that. But if you if you took the piss, that was it. It was done. You know, if you if you if, if you you know, yeah, I'll, I'll be back on Tuesday, and you you know, you rock back Wednesday. You, you wouldn't be fucking getting time off again. You know, that that'd be it. So he was. Um, he, yeah, he was he, he was brilliant. He was he was good, and he and he did. I don't know whether fans have a perception of him. I, you know, I know he's quite marmite make at Millwall, isn't he? But preparation was always good. The tactics, shape, you know, stuff like that. He, he was. He, it wasn't just like five sides and roll out on a Saturday. You know, we did we did a lot of stuff in and out of possession. It was quite it was it, it was quite detailed how we played and stuff like that. So you know, he was he was good. Really good manager, me. Really good manager. Move on to what did you say, your first season, dream season. You come over, as you said, you was playing in, in the Irish League and then all of a sudden you're scoring at Stamford Bridge. Uh, big big things expected from the club. We go into the 94-95 season. We signed some players for the first time. We actually show you know, a bit of a decent ambition. I think we sold Andy Roberts at that point and it freed up some money. So, um, Uwe Fuchs, three quarters of a million. Chris Malkin, 400 grand. I've got to ask you what Uwe was like. Because he he came on the back of being on loan at Middlesbrough, he scored like fourteen in sixteen yeah. for them, and yeah. he couldn't fucking hit a barn door of a dark, could he? For no, us, he no, scored one of his ass at Palace. That's it. He was, uh, I mean, t- I mean, technically he was good. You know, he used to train and stuff like that. And you could see, you could see, he was German. And he t- you, see, you could see that. You know, he, he had thing, but I, I don't know what it is. Sometimes it, sometimes a club's possibly not a fit, but. I mean, I think the fans, the fans called him Duvet. <laughs> <He's on laughs> fucking floors. Yeah, but he was a. Uh, 
he, he, he assimilated himself fairly well. You know, the lads, the lads seemed to have time for him. He, he worked hard and trained, and it wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like the the Russian scenario where it come it over. Right. You know, it, it was, he, he, he was working hard and he, he, he tried. You know, he, he, he was just like, like you say, I don't, he just couldn't seem to. He, and he scored at Middlesbrough, and even Malks. I mean, Malks had a Malks and Aldridge a really good partnership. Oh, we was Malkin. Oh, it was decent. Yeah, and and you know he. he, he you think it maybe did, he didn't probably get the amount of goals he got at Tranmere, you know, up there. All that, but again, you know, what sort of set where you're coming into? Which there's all sort of factors like that. But but the set, the, yeah, the second season was second season was really tough, really really tough. We, we started off um, despite Fuchs maybe not firing, and the ambition seemed to pay off at first. We was top of the league, obviously, and then from Christmas onwards, um, it just went to shit. Um, We'll cover it in more detail, but we had two two piss Russians at one point. We had the four Scots that come in like Jimmy Nickel. It was just a lot of people in that the door administration hit around that time, I believe. So um, let's, let's start with, with Big Mick, obviously, because again, you say he's my mind, Millwall. And you don't have to go into great detail, but obviously something went wrong where we was top and then dropped the fucking the, the Irish job was obviously there impending for him and he and he wanted to go and, and do that. And um before he did do that though, the Russians. You ran in Kolkov. Constantly well, lagging, no? Well, well, it, well, it was a big, there was a big thing about them because uh, yeah. did they come, was it was a Benfica. They come that from highly recommended from um, yeah from Benfica by Bobby Robson. And and they and they, and they were in in around the Russian squad for ninety six Euro ninety six. Mm-hmm. So we so we were thinking they'll have they'll have the bit between the teeth for you know for for the, but it was. It was it was weird, mate. It was it was it was weird. It was like and obviously they come in and they were on rumored to be on, five grand a week I think and at that time. I mean, I don't know what. Obviously, Alex and probably would have been one of the top earners and stuff. But because you're talking about, you know, you're talking about that long time. So, you know, and, and I don't know whether that has a bit of an impact. Like, it didn't for me, mate, because you're a younger player, and I, it didn't, you know, it wasn't. But maybe for I don't know whether the likes of Alex and stuff are thinking. I, I play every week here. I score double figure goals every year, and you're paying mm. these two five grand a week, and um, it was it was it was surreal, mate. It was like you know. We, we, I think one of the first games, I don't know, we played up at Grimsby, Grimsby away. Oh, was it? Like, we won 2-1. That was well, one of the good games that you ran at. You won a play yeah, with you. He might, yeah, I don't, and, and, but I remember coming afterwards and we were booked, because I don't know whether we'd been on a bit of a tricky one, but we'd come in anyway afterwards. And we, but I, I, remember, <laughs> I remember going in, the, the Grim, Grimsby got shit out, the doors were hanging off and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And, and I, went, I went, in, went in the toilet to piss us and, it, and he was sitting on the he was sitting on the jacksie, back in his mouth, bottle of beer. So you ran, yeah. And I was thinking, yeah, I know. Look, we like a beer and all that. But he must have had it in his bag because he because because he, he had his he had his Millwall shorts on. <laughs> and he, you know, but well, to be honest, some of the things some of the things they did in training, you like, you know, they, they they were good. You know, you could see. But it's just they just obviously. I'd come over for a, I don't know, a six month jolly. I I, I, don't, I don't know, but mm. they had an interpreter with them, mate. I don't know whether you, you'd been around the club at that time. <laughs> it was like, he was like a KGB assassin, mate. He was like, <laughs> he had these like Jeff Black sunglasses, like black leather jacket on. And he's like, I, I, I just chuckled when I seen him, mate, because you'd like, you'd see him first and he'd like, Come in and, and then they'd come in and I was thinking and he, he was the he was the uh, interpreter. You know, he, he would interpret yeah, yeah. So he was so he was in the changing room and stuff like that. And it, it, it was it was surreal, mate, because he looked so shady. He looked it just didn't look right. It just didn't look they, right. They were tripping into towing all Versace gear and all, but now I think oh. Mark Hershon told us. Yeah, they were they were it's funny, mate. He got he got when when Mick went, they were they were still there. And I think Ian Evans was still Ian Evans was still at the club. Mick had Mick had gone. And Taff was taking caretaker, and he put them in the reserves. And uh, we we turned up at the training ground to train, and he turned up, and he obviously thought it was a first team game. He was told to play in this game, so they they, they they've come up and they've they've seen the bus, and all, all the kids are on there, like you know, all, all the kids. And he's he sort of said to the interpreter, the interpreter's gone over to Taff and said, like, what's going on here? And yeah, they're playing in the reserves. He playing in the reserves. He said to him, and he, so he said. <laughs> so, so Taff went, Taff went, tell him it's two weeks' wages. Don't play in the reserve. So he said, uh, two weeks' wages. 
just fucked off. I just I didn't care, mate. Just let's <laughs> got his car and drove off. It, you know, just if, but that that it, like around that time, mate, it, it started it started to go to the, like it was just now nah, something's not right. You know, it's not you know this is in here, and when we needed, you know, we needed to have a bit more of it, you know, a unit, and it it was it was stacks things like that were starting to happen, you know, and it was. We just sort of losing it. We were losing games, and, and, and it was it was weird to be in because I, I thought at the start of the season when when we applied, I thought we got a chance here again. Ooh, top, we were top for a while. Yeah, I was thinking we could we could we could probably, you know at least at least be in the playoff shake you know at the end of the season with, with what we have. I think, and then it just it, it was like the football club towards the end of that season was totally different to the football club that I walked into. You know, I, I, when, when I, I walked in, I thought, wow, look at these. And, and, and you and you the core of players that you could possibly have seen there for five, six, seven years. Now, obviously, good players were going to get sold. But potentially, Ben was a kid. Kenny Cunningham was a young lad. Um, you, you, Andy Roberts, Alec Ray were in his prime. Sparky was a young kid. Johnny Goodman. You know, you could think, mm-hmm. hell, this team could be. And But towards the end of that season, it was just like, they're going, they're coming in. There, It was like... You know, like merry go round, a complete merry go round. Yeah. No togetherness, no team spirit. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah. Just it was just, just everyone not, united. Not, not that, not that people want. I never say people want trying hard or anything like that. I've, I've never been at a club where people haven't had a goal, but it was just, just so, just so disjointed. You yeah. know, it was. And then obviously we we, we appointed uh, Jimmy Nick. I think Jimmy Nick came in. Well, yeah, Mick McCarthy leaves the club. Obviously, um, it was, it must have been a strange one for you because Mick obviously brought you to Millwall. Had, had a lot of faith in him as a player. I think he was involved when you got your Irish, Irish debut. Is that right as well? So yeah, so I, I played in the under twenty ones before, obviously under Jack Charlton. But then Mick Mick had, Mick had, Mick had brought me in that that summer, I think. That that summer, I think for the for the uh, and yeah, he was. I mean, Mick, Mick was well taught of anyway. He, he, he captain Ireland to eighty eight, you know, Italian ninety and stuff. So he he was a bit of an iconic figure for me, Mick. Anyway, um, but yeah, it was a strange one because. Although I think we'd lost a few games coming up to before when he went, he was a figurehead for the club, and I, 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 I think I, I definitely, 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 hundred percent, we wouldn't have went down if he stayed. Yeah, hundred percent, mate. We might not have. We were losing games and that, but he was the type when we had a bad run the season before. He knew what to do. He knew the answer to turn it round and get it sorted. Mm. I hundred percent don't think we'd have, we'd have went down. Whether we'd have got in the playoffs, or I don't know. But I'm fairly convinced we wouldn't have went down. Do you remember the day he said to you, you know, I'm leaving the club? Did he sit you all down and say that, like, say his goodbyes? And what was that like? I can't remember now, you know. I don't, I don't know whether he'd done a, he, he, he done a piece. I don't even know what his last game was, to be honest. Uh, it was sell down the way, but that would, I, I don't know whether but sell down the way is something. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't remember a moment where he's gone and said, look, I've been off. I mean, it was fairly common knowledge because I think Ireland lost to Holland in December in, in the playoff. And Jack- was, there was a lot of hype around it. So that's why Mill, a lot of Mill fans see it the way they see it. That, you know, he, he was, he was, his eyes was distracted yeah. by the Ireland job. And so, yeah, it was quite, it was quite um, well documented that he, you know, he, he was going to be the main man for the I job. Think he was, yeah, I think he was going to get it, mate. I think he was always, I think he was always going to get it. Uh, I think the profile... The, 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 the playoff defeat the year before, the cup run the year later, uh, and then the good start to the season. I think I think his stock was quite high, and he and he was always going to get it. Um, but I, I I didn't. I got to be honest. I didn't notice, and not just because Mick saw me. I, I didn't notice yeah. a, a change in. I didn't notice a change in sort of his attitude yeah, towards. Yeah, yeah. In, in, towards it in any way. I mean, he was as disappointed when, when we were losing games, and he he was he was as. Determined, he wasn't not. He wasn't on the training ground, or he wasn't doing stuff like that. But you know, obviously, he he probably knew in in the back of his mind that he was kind of he was going to be appointed the Ireland manager. So he leaves the club. John Doherty comes back. Mill, obviously, Mill legend, the only manager ever to take us to the top flight. He came back to like something like a forty man squad and tried to steady the ship. Um, listen, he was a le- he was a legend at Mill, but I, I, I don't know. I can't who we spoke to. He said obviously he's. He was, he was quite an old man by that point and his, and his uh, methods were quite dated. And... Do you know what, Dan? I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't mind it, Doc. Mm. Because he, he got the best out of what was available to him at the time. And, and we were obviously in a bit of a, you know, a bit of trouble and on a bit of a slide. And he, he, he utilised what he had, you know. Yeah. So he, 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 
yeah, he bypassed midfield. He didn't want to play because, to be honest, at, at the time, people weren't playing with a lot of confidence. You know, people, you know, were finding it hard to find a pass and be expansive. So he's seen all that, and, and that for me is good management. You know, if you say, look, this is what we need to do to get results. So I, 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 I didn't mind. I didn't mind playing in that sort of system and getting forward and getting after it. And, um, you know, I scored him. I scored against Notts County when he was manager in, in, in one of the games, and, and he managed to dig enough results out to, to get us, you know, out of the. Out it of must the be run. difficult as well when when you're a player and you're a regular player in your position, which he was, and you've got a lot of players coming in and out of the team. It takes time to get to know how our players play, doesn't it? And play with each other's strengths and get an understanding. You've got fucking two Russians in one week, a fucking German on the floor the next. <laughs> but it must be fucking difficult to. Do you know what I mean? Get an understanding and, and, and play. Yeah, there's, there, there's nothing like... I mean, if you look at the successful Millwall teams after that come, so they, they, obviously the lads that come through after us and the city, mm-hmm. you could probably name the team most weeks. Yeah, uh, and, right. any, and any team... I, mean, I won promotion with Northampton after I left Millwall and the team was basically the same every week. There's a lot to be said for that familiarity, but that, that sort of season... I mean, I, 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 I don't, I, I, without looking at it, th- I, you would, I don't think you'd have got the same starting eleven most consecutive oh, weeks. No. Um, so, it was, so it was, it was tough, and it was just, I mean, the atmosphere down was, it was, it's, it's hard to, I mean, supporters w- w- were focused on the, like their clubs in a bad way, and and, and the football's bad, and rightly so, they'll be critical. But the, the, the baggage that goes with how difficult, how difficult it is. It's like it's everything, and you and you can't you, you you can't sort of get away with it. It's not the type of job where you know you're a plumber and you come home at four o'clock and think that's done, leave it there. You know, it, it consumes twenty four seven. You know, so when it's bad, the clubs and the administration, what's going to happen next year? What you know, you, you you're not playing well. Especially and it, in Bermondsey and drinking in the Albany as well, it must be very fucking difficult to, to escape. Well, I mean, you, yeah, I mean. You, even, even, even it was just it's. I mean, f- football is like that, mate. To be honest, and ev- everywhere I've went after that, I think you, you live it. You know, you, it's 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 unique as a job that you you can't you you can't you can't switch it off. Maybe some players can. Maybe the ones that you know excel and go up can switch it off and 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 take and then go back and forth. But most lads I know I speak to, it's it's there. It's 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 there twenty four seven, and especially when it's going bad in a club like Millwall, where it's 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 like you say the, the lads coming in the, the the bar, you know, after and the like that was going to your car after people had come and say, you no, know, you felt threatened that like that, but what the fuck's mm-hmm. going on? You know what? And you know it's it's constantly, um, and it was tough. It was tough to to to, to yeah, and, and when you when you can't find where the next win's coming from, you know, it was really, that that period was was really hard. We end up with our third manager of the season. Jimmy Nicholl came highly recommended from Rafe. They was absolutely devastated when he left. He comes down and he brings four Scots with him. Um, what was your feeling then when he came in? He was all right, mate. He was a good character, but it was just... Um... Was it, do you think it was a sinking ship that couldn't be saved by the time he came in? Which would have been... I'm not even sure when. I don't think Doc was there long, so it must have been about March time, mustn't it? Yeah. It would have been difficult, wouldn't it? Difficult, but yeah. It, I mean... Yeah, it's, it's it's hard to speculate. I mean, we 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 were in a spiral, but he, he, the only thing I would the only thing negatively that I'd say against Jimmy Nick was we did his training sessions were brilliant, all technical. He'd obviously been at Man U as a player and stuff like that, all technical and shooting, and it was it was really enjoyable as a player. But we we never did a lot of tactical stuff, so we never did all the managers previous to that. You know, in and out possession, your shape, where you should be, and stuff like that. He he didn't do a lot of that. And, I heard it was a lot of five sides and shooting and stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I think I don't know whether it was the following season or it, I think we 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 had a meeting and we spoke about you know we need to go and say can we you know we need to do some of this we need to start and I think the sort of the thing was look you know look you're football players you know you know if you don't know how to defend or if you don't you know they didn't do it at Man United or you know that 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 type of thing and. It just it, it has to be done, you know. It's such a fundamental part of the game, and 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 you know, especially with new players coming in, you know, you ha- you have to you have to drill that into people to you know re- repetitiveness. You speak, you listen to the Arsenal players speaking about George Graham. You it know, just becomes <laughs> second second nature. It becomes yeah. happy, didn't you? To yeah. get in shape and do yeah. you got to, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, possibly I think maybe that was, was a factor in in in. In him not being quite as successful as 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 he maybe was up in Scotland. 
I think Sads was a young boy at the time, but Sads said, you know, he was he wasn't he wasn't really around the first team at that point, but he could see that maybe Jimmy was um, too involved with the players. One of the boys really still he didn't. There weren't really that fine line between who was you know he was too involved with the players as one of the boys sort of thing. It was yeah. always out, out, and he said everyone was fucking smoking and drinking. Not you, obviously. Yeah, he did. I mean, he didn't. He, he, I mean, I, I, I never, I never socialised with him. You know, I never, I never had it. I never socialised with him. Whether he went out with, I don't know when he met this. I don't, I, I don't know. I, 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 I wouldn't say that. I mean, I, the, the, the culture was pretty much the same. I think you know, like lads went out, but it's, it, it's like anything else. Dan. when you're winning, it's not an issue. Yeah, you know, yeah. the, the, the lads that the lads that had come previous the year, the cup run or the playoff run the year before, the lads would tell you what they were doing. And it's not an issue. When you're not picking up results, it's a problem. You know, you go. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think there was anything extra, you know, out of hand like that. Um, I just think, I just think it was a it was a really bad time at the club, and there was a lot of baggage for for, for players to sort of carry at the time, and they, and they just just didn't deal with it well enough. It was a very difficult job to come into. Um, he didn't help put some nails in his coffin, his own coffin. Four Scottish players um, came in: Jason Dare. Paul Hartley, I thought was decent. Stephen Crawford, okay. I thought was decent. And Jason Dare, what was they like? The Scottish boys, did they? How did they take to uh, yeah. London life? You told us it, a little bit, obviously, how they backdoored it in the players bar, but what, what integrate, you, what integrate, integrate, integrated yeah. fairly well, mate. Integrated fairly well. Um, all right for a night out, and you know, yeah, yeah, there, there, there weren't any issue, mate. There was no sort of, um, they just like I say, Steve, Stevie done well. Yeah, and I think he went back up and had played for Scotland, and, 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 mm-hmm. and as well as Paul Hartley went and played for Celtic. You could tell Hartley was a good player. You tell yeah, me, yeah. he, he was very young at that time. I mean, we had little curtains, didn't he? he used to like, yeah, he struggled. He, he struggled with uh, he struggled with homesickness, Paul. Did he? he yeah, yeah. I, I spent a bit of time with him, mate. I took uh, uh, yeah, um, not took him under my wing, but I used to I used to have a chat with him because I was coming from Ireland and stuff like that when, when I was younger, sixteen, and so I knew what he was feeling. So I used to I used to sort of spend a bit of time with him and take him. Bought some tickets one time for me and him to go to see Billy Connolly and stuff like that up at the up at the up at the Odeon up there, you know, just sort of. But he he was struggling. He was down with his missus, but he, he just found it. He just found it really hard, and he was he was he was desperate to get back, you know. Um, and then, I mean, Jason Dare, and it just it, it just didn't happen for him, mate. You know, it just it just, it just didn't happen for him. I mean, I mean, obviously, obviously at Wraith Rovers, they they'd obviously done really well for Nick. They did like a European Cup run or something. Like that. Did they get into Europe or something? They, they beat Celtic in a cup final, I think, and and they qualified for 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 European. So they were they were they come down as like quite, you know, de- decent signings. They'd obviously mm-hmm. done well, but. It, it's it's very tough at the den, Dan. When if 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 you don't hit the ground running, if you're not, you know, and and, and he, yeah, Jason there just didn't hit the ground running, and he just he just couldn't seem to shake it. And then it was just constantly, you know, it was on him, and he and he found a hard sinky. I just don't think played. I just I can't remember. He, him. he lost as a character. He come down with this big reputation of Dave. I think Jimmy Nichols said Davy Sinclair's got tattoos on his teeth. He's a fucking hard man. But um, he he soon went back to Scotland, mate, didn't he, with his tail between. Yeah, yeah. He never, he, never, he never had any. I mean, in terms of being a harm, he never had any instances with. You know, it was never. He was never involved in any tear ups mm. and training or anything like that. And he, and he didn't, didn't really see enough from Dan to be honest. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't play or even train enough. I think he had a few, a few problems with injuries. But it's stuff like that that sort of sets you back in the eyes of the punters because he brought these four in, obviously giving them half decent deals. And like apart from Stevie and and, and Paul Hartley, you know, the other two guys didn't really. Could it? So you put yourself under pressure, then you know you brought, and, and as soon as it starts to go, you know it's, it, it, that's another sort of a avenue where they're going to come after you. Like you, yeah, your recruitment's not good enough. To attack, you know. So yeah, of course. yeah, it was, it was, it was it, it, more it, ammo, it, more ammo for him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, a player that came in when Jimmy Nickel was there on loan, possibly I, I couldn't believe how good he was, was Darren Huckabee, but. Again, you don't get a lot of clarification on these things back in the day. You hear rumours. There's no conf- confirmation through social media. I heard originally we got the opportunity to sign him permanently. And then Jimmy Nichols said, no, I've got a better geezer coming down from Scotland called Jason Dare. But then he ended up going back when he realised it weren't working with Dare and he got Huckabee in on loan. How good was he, Huckabee? He used uh, to run through the whole team on his own. I couldn't believe it when I was I mean, a team. I mean, I, I'd, I'd, never, I'd never heard much about Hooks before he came. No. You know, he'd come in on loan. And he trained and that, but like, 
you know, he, look, anywhere, anywhere, give him the ball and, you know, out wide, he'd find space for himself and he was off. And he was like, you know, just, and he, he gave us a lift, the energy, he was, he was, he was top drop. And obviously he went and done it in the premiership after. Yeah. You know, I'd heard the rumour with an opportunity to, when he, when he was on loan, that we with an opportunity to to get him, but for a certain amount of money, which obviously wasn't around for us at the time. Mm. Um, but he was a good lad. He, really, he enjoyed it as well. He really enjoyed his spell at, at, at the club, and he he was uh, integrated well with the boys. And that really good lad. He used to speak to him when the, when the bus coming back, and he oh, yeah, I'll try in here, you know. And I, I think he liked it as well because we'd given that platform, and I think he might have went. I, 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 might be, I think someone does well on loan for us, like Chris Woodbridge years later, and then yeah. someone just like Jason Malumbi is now. Someone will come in and just see he's doing yeah. well for us and offer more yeah. wages, whatever. And yeah, it's, just... it's, it's, it's difficult, mate. Certainly at yeah. that level, even with your younger players and stuff, if you get anyone on loan, it's, it's very hard. And we were we weren't tearing up any trees at the time as well. So you know, but he, he done that well, mate. He was he was always going to go to. He, he was always going to be a, a Premiership club. He was always going to get a move. Um, but, but, but good top top. I'd have, I'd have loving him to even. Even managed to get a year because because I, I think in all my in all my time at Millwall and I might be wrong here the stats you might you might you might tell me wrong up to maybe Chopper come in I don't know whether we ever had a twenty goal centre forward no we, well we had obviously um, Teddy Sheringham in the late eighties early nineties yeah. but after that nothing and then post Harris again nothing really till sort of Morris and Gregory era yeah I mean, so so I, I think that always, yeah. uh, always will do probably yeah and I, I think that time period of Certainly, the year the year we finished twelfth, I, I think, because jo- Johnny Good went in that year. I don't, I don't know. What, I don't know what time he went. And Mark Kennedy went in about March. I think Johnny Johnny Goodman was on ten goals at the time, so he possibly could have been, you know, a, a twenty goal man at that season because he's got. And Mark, I think Mark had probably eight or nine. Mm-hmm. So you're taking, you know, you, you you know coming towards the run. I don't know what points we finished on, but. You know, you're probably looking at if, you, if Johnny Goodman stays and gets 21, 22 goals, and Mark gets 13, 14 goals. You know, is that the difference between another? Oh, million! Oh, eight, the amount eight, of players eight, we lost was ridiculous. Eight or nine so, points. So it's, it's not an excuse because all, all players lose them, and, and I, I know that. But I, I think at key times it would have been nice. I think one of the seasons because I used to look at remember the four season West Brom, and I think they, they were struggling. They were around mid table at bottom half, and didn't remember Bob Taylor, the centre forward. Big Bob Taylor. Played for as well, didn't he? That one, yeah. He got about, got about 28 goals for West Brom. Yeah. You know, and, and you, and you, in a struggling team, you know, and you're thinking, be nice, you know, that 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 the, the difference. But, yeah, it, it's all it's all ifs and buts. But it, it would have been, no, I don't think it's in my time we, we, we ever had one. And obviously Chopper came in and, you know, Chopper was a phenomenal goal scorer, you know. But it, it would have been interesting to see, mate, if we could have, if we could have recruited with a couple, maybe. I think that might have been the difference. Mm, well, it wasn't to be, mate. And unfortunately, the 95 96 season ended in relegation on the final day at Ipswich. I, I remember that. I actually locked myself in my toilet and started crying my eyes out. Um, it was horrific. Just for the promise of McCarthy coming in, us going close to the playoffs twice, then the brilliant cut run of 95. Um, that was all, you know, that could be understood the, uh, the mid table finish in the league. But then the season after, to go top to bottom, three managers, 40 odd players. Like you said, it was, uh, well, what, what did it feel like to go down, finally go down? The realization. It's horrible, mate. To be, to be fair, relegate relegation as if it's a, it's a it's it's a sign of failure, isn't it? That as as a, as, a, as, a, as a group, as everyone, as a manager, as a player, as, as you know, you, you you you've ultimately failed, you know, and and you would probably wouldn't have been the only one, mate. That that was so it, it affects it affects so many people. Um, mm-hmm. And and like you say, you just you just you feel like you failed on it. That that that's what's happened. You, you ultimately that year. You haven't, you know, you you haven't been good enough, and and with 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 in hindsight, with how good the, the sort of previous seasons and the highs you'd experienced up to that was was a bit of one to take, mate. And I think was it was it was a goal difference. I don't, I think it might be. We wasn't in the bottom three going into the final day. I remember that. Yeah. And I think I think, think, I think a point would say like point with a guaranteed safety. I think I think it was goal. I think it was goal difference in the end, and then you start analysing mm. across the whole season. And you and you think all them defeats that that towards the back end and that's it one win, mm. one of them you know one, and and you start looking at stuff like that you know. We, or even if, it, we, if we did win three 0 that game instead of two 0 we might you know might. Yeah, yeah. So so it's yeah it it, it, it was horrible, mate. It was it was uh, it was it was yeah that was the first time that that had obviously happened to me. And then you know your players at the club who have been you know seen 
unbelievable Rhino, you know, who's we, seen unbelievable highs at the club, and it and it's written all over the face, mate. You know, it's like it's because he's Millwall, and he, do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's, 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 and it's yeah, it was horrible, horrible, mate. It's um, it's such a strange like to look back on. It's not exciting, but you for some reason is. There's something almost enjoyable about looking back at just like mad times at the club. And it, it was, again, it was completely fucked in a way because it was an administration, a lot of managers, no real, you know, identity for the club. But at the same time, the following season, 97-98, um, you've got Robbie Ryan joins the club, Tim Cahill coming through, Neil Harris joins the club, makes his debut, Stephen Reid, Danny Hockton, Richie Sadley. It, must, it was a very weird... But the new gem were coming through. Obviously, in that next season, the 97-98, it was your final season at the club. Um, we finished eighth, but um, Jimmy Nickel lost his job. Would it have been Billy Bonds after him then? Billy, Billy, Billy Bonds came in for Billy. I, 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 I think I had a year on the Billy Bonds. Um, I, I actually saw, I signed because I, I signed I signed again on the because I, I think I was out of contract and um, could have I could have went to Preston. I I, I had a. I got. I didn't have an agent at the time. I didn't. I'd, I'd done all my, all my old deals. Well, well, the club offered you something. You took it. You, you know, you're happy to be, be playing. And that, that's the way it was back then. Yeah. I didn't have an agent. So someone rang me up in in the in the in the, towards the end of the season, and I was I was out of contract and said, "Oh, uh, Preston are interested in in in, in signing you to put a bid in for you early on in the season." Got took, got got torn down. Um, obviously, you you know, you're free to move. We can you. Just didn't know what was happening at, at Millwall because uh, I don't even I don't know whether Billy had even been appointed yet. I started with the season with Jimmy Nickel, and then he got sacked in the back the um, back of February, I think again. So yeah, yeah. So and then I got I got a phone call from Billy Bond saying, "Would I come?" I was in Ireland at the time. So would you would you come over and and have a talk? So I, I flew over, and Billy and, and Theo uh, for was was in there. Said, "Look, you know, I want to offer you another, you know another two years. Here's what we're offering." I said, yeah, happy, because I was happy, I was happy, you know, I was in the area, I said, so, yeah, signed it, and then had, had a year on the Bonzo, and then that, that we, we, again, I think January time, or fourth, or mm. something like that, we're, we're in the mix, and and I, I don't know what it is with the second half of seasons, we, 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 we started we start to tail off, and um it, 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 again, that was hard for him because I tell you what, he, I, 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 I like Billy. He was he was good. He was a good manager. Every he, every one of our everyone I spoke to says the same. He was a good he was a good manager. And I tell you what, mate, he was he was he was honest to a fault, mate. He was the, and and do you know what? He's one of the toughest geezers of you you ever you ever come across, mate. He was his training sessions. It was like he weekly. was at front of the running money every every time, uh, for, mate. It was like. Used to be a training ground at, at Bromley, and you'd go into the physio room, and the next to the physio room there was like a big pane glass window, and the gym was in there. And you'd, you'd come in to use the gym to go in the door, and you'd go in, you'd fucking hear these weights clacking about, and you fucking look look for the window, and he's like, get his top off. He's fucking slinging these, like, they're, they're like fucking bus tires on the end of these dumbbells. <laughs> and you just do a Yui and go back out. <laughs> Give me your nail, you little dumbbells. <laughs> fucking frownies. He was he was unreal, mate. He was unreal, and his training sessions. You used to do this little training session, with lads in a circle about about thirty by thirty, two in the middle. You throw a ball in, and it's one v one, and you can use the lads on the outside, and you know fuck, the, the amount of fights, mate, because they'd, they'd be going and he'd be saying, "Fucking get into him," you know. If, if one lad was getting the better, you fucking gonna let him do that. Fucking get in the, you know, and the lads would be the lads would be going, "Way, way," and then all of a sudden, fucking on the floor, like. Oh really? Oh, yeah, it was. It was. It was, it was, it was, it was what players did you ever see go toe to toe? Can you remember? Can you say? It was. It was a few. I think. I think. I think. I think Ricky Newman had one with someone before. Ricky, well, I mean, Ricky Newman and Granty. I don't know. Ricky Newman might have had it, and then Paul Allen. With Paul Allen was a fucking little, you know, Mad. rat, and he was fucking at you all the time, and it's like you you pass the ball off, and he would come in and. Like, the lads would be on the on the floor like fucking like the top one, and the lads would be. It was like so intense. His training was so intense, and as he liked it, he loved it. You know, yeah, getting the, he, that was what he was like running up the front, all the running. You know, he was, it was unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, but he was he was good. I just think, I just think the West Ham one, mate. It was it was too too big a bridge to cross. You know, I I, I, I think maybe if he'd have been 
Amy had been at another club, you know, he, he, he might have been able to. Because as, as soon as you as soon as you lost a couple, you know, he's West Ham. West Ham. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, then, and I think I think Brownie came in and 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 and, and Paul Allen and yeah, started to you. Good, good pros, mate. Good pros, Brownie. But you know, and, the West Ham infil- infiltration. Yeah, that's what they're thinking. <laughs> Change the kids to <laughs> Um But again, like I say, these youngsters coming through. We'll talk about them in a minute. Uh, but other players are coming at the club. Paul Shaw. Um, what was he like, Paul Shaw? Uh, he was a good player, wasn't he? he was very good. Technically, he was Arsenal. When he cut my Arsenal, Shaw, he mm. very good player. Played almost played like off the front man. Good, great vision, awareness, touch. You know, good. good you could tell. Tell he'd been he'd been schooled at a decent level. Good lad as well. Good, yeah. really good lad as well. Yeah, yeah. Good lad came in and integrated into it straight away. Um, and then you you start I had that little bit of that was that was the sort of tone of them lads getting integrated. There's a little bit of light sort of you know like sads coming through. Uh, I don't know who else. Bully, you know maybe Bully starting to get a look. Bertie, Bertie. Uh, yeah, Stephen Reid got his debut that year. Robbie Ryan joined the club from Huddersfield. Yeah. So you're starting to look that then that maybe there's there's, there's some not, not just young players, good young players mm. coming through, you know. Neil Harris obviously joined the club that season. Chopper come in. Uh, I, I, do you know what, mate? I'll never forget. I laugh about this with the players and this. We 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 done a we done an end of season thing at the day, and you know, meet the fans and stuff like that. And we was me, Chopper, and there was a couple of other a couple of other lads there, and and. Uh, this punt to come out. He wasn't happy, mate. You know, he was talking about like signings and not spending money and that. And he's fucking moaning. He went, yeah, <laughs> fucking no disrespect, mate. He went, uh, he said, I've spent more money on a point than a packet of crisps than we bought you for. <laughs> the chopper. He fucking stood it like that. <laughs> but he went on, he went, he went on to be, uh, he went on to be unbelievable. Broke Teddy's record, didn't he? And, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah fantastic. But I think that was the, that was the, that was the, that was the, the tournament of it, and then to be fair, mate, what Rhino and Maka did, c- considering like where it was, you know, f- phenomenal job. Done, yeah, that, yeah. that that was that was a good that was a that was a big big task they had to take on. Done a phenomenal job with that. The wheel started to turn slowly with the good players coming through. Rhino and Maka take over. Some still some like I'm not random, but other other characters at the club at that time, which I don't really even really remember, but I remember them because their goalkeepers, big goalkeepers in the late eighties, early nineties. Mark Crossley came to the club. What was he yeah. like? Good, good I've lad, seen him on a lot of other podcasts him when he's a funny fucker. Yeah, good lad, Crosser. Get got yeah, got got get, got involved. I mean, because he, he he used to I don't know whether I don't know where he used to stay or whether he, he was down. I can't remember. Can't remember ever ever seeing him out much or, or, or being out like that. But he was good, he was good banter. You know, he's on the coach. He'd been around. He'd been, he'd been you know he'd been he'd been at a good level and stuff like that. But he was he was a he was a good character. Got in straight away with the lads. He'd be up back back in the bus playing cards and stuff like that. He he was straight in and. Uh, Spinky, Spinky, Spinky. Yeah, there he goes. Yeah, he's yeah, a good, yeah. Nigel Spink, yeah, like yeah, Spink, I don't even really remember him being at the club, but apparently he was he was a good character as well to be around. Yeah, yeah. Again, like legend Spinky, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? He's like like <laughs> European cups and stuff like that. But yeah, dead dead, dead down to earth, mate. Really, 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 really good, really good. He came in and he was. I don't know what he was doing a bit. Let me doing a bit of coaching Spinky as well, goalkeeping coaching. But he was. I mean, he the, the, he still had you know he put on. Like shooting sessions and stuff like that, and he'd be in the goal, you know, he'd be doing. Fuck, I mean, think, how are you going to get this past him, mate? He was huge, and he was still, he was still top draw, like still really good. Um, but yeah, good characters again. They used to, used to, you know, rock up and and, and so and Andy Gray, and Andy Gray was a long coming in a lot, a lot times, you know, like you see a player come in, and but again, I don't know how. I don't know how beneficial they were, mate. You know, like almost, almost no disrespect, like stop gaps. You know, come in, yeah, it was yeah, a favour for a month. Whether, you know, whether it might have been worth throwing Bertie in for, mm. you know, give him, give him his legs and maybe come through early. I, 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 I don't know, but um, it, it, it did start to get to that way towards the end. You know, yeah, the, so that, so. a lot, of, lot of strong players coming through. Did you was you aware of how good they was coming through? Did they train yeah. in the first team, or did you look at? Yeah. For example, you know, Sads, Reedy, um, who else would have been there? Sads, Reedy, uh, Danny Hockton, even. Danny, 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 Danny sort of came in first of all. I think Danny came in before them all. Uh, got his sort of blooded early on, uh, and then Sads started to have a sniff in there. And then mm-hmm. I remember to sort of Timmy and, and Reedy and that. Like, Reedy really, really was a good player. Reedy really, really was. I, 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 me personally, I always, <clears throat> I, I, he was the one that. 
stuck out for me. I thought, yeah, yeah really. Tim, Timmy and that, Lucas Neal was a terrific footballer. Lucas, yeah. Lucas, Lucas was, Lucas had great quality. Timmy was, you could all, you, you, did, I, did I ever think, maybe not to the, to the extent of where Timmy went to. I, I always thought, because he, he used to do like training sessions and stuff like that, but he always arrived and score goals. But, I mean, he was only a young kid, so he probably hadn't developed that side of his game, the technical side about getting the ball, which he did at Everton. I, I thought he was, I thought he was a proper Premier League. But did, 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 I, did I sort of see that at that? You know, maybe not. I thought I thought he would be, I thought he'd be a, a top player. I thought he'd be a good player. But Reedy was, Reedy was strong, quick. You know, decent, decent, decent both feet. Um, always thought Reedy would, Reedy would go on and 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 be, be a top player. But they were all. I mean, what what a good crop. To, to come through like all, all, all of that and, and obviously then they carry, carry the club forward for three, four, five years after that you know he used to clean your boots really didn't he really did man my funny I, 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 I used to look after really you know, give him a few bob and, and I, <laughs> we, we played against we played against Millwall at Northampton up here uh, a year or two after I left funny enough I scored two goals that night we drew three all and uh, I come in the bar afterwards and I, I see him really there I said, you fucking got that hundred quid I gave you a few years ago, mate. I'm fucking brassy. And he started laughing. I went, I ain't fucking taking the piss, mate. I said, I'm fucking playing for Northampton. <laughs> no. But, uh, yeah, good, yeah, great, good, good lads. They were, and they were, you know, they were, they were, again, that, that group as well, were, like, came in and just, and played, you know, on the back of the club not doing so well and just took to it and took on the mantle and the, and the pressure of responsibility. Brilliant. Really, really good. And then, and then, say Billy Bonds ends up leaving during that time, and your old teammate Ryan O becomes manager with yeah. Alan McCleary. Did yeah. you play much under Rat Mike, Ryan O Macca? You sort of coming towards the end of your Millwall time there, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think that that season, that 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 pre season, I think it was pretty much the because because obviously he was he was gonna he was gonna play all these boys, you know, Timmy, yeah, no, uh, sure. Ives, and stuff like that. So uh, he sort of said to me. Pre-season. It was funny, actually. It was weird. I, I, you know, you, you learn how football works as it goes on. But it was like it was almost like it was like you know, Ryan Ryan was fucking Ryan was the coarsest man in the world. And he like he's like, there's no, listen, mate. You know, blah blah blah. He's like, and and uh, I, I, I was sort of pre-season came, wasn't involved, and I was with the kids, and I hadn't really had a conversation and stuff like that. And played a played a pre-season game over. At, we played Brentford behind closed doors, and I was on the bench. And I come on, and players are their own worst critics and that. And I, you know, you know when you've not played. And I, mate, I did all right. I come on for a half hour. I think I set up a goal, and I, I, I did okay pre-season game. I came in, he fucking slaughtered me. He fucking slaughtered. Me. You can't. I can I'm, I'm thinking, what the fuck's happened here? Like, you didn't get this. What about all right? Like, He's like fucking blah. And I'm thinking, and I, I'm like, all right. So I went out and I said, I said to the, you know, you, you question yourself, I'm asking people. I said. Was I that bad when I come on? No, you did, like, did, like, did quite well. I thought, like, speaking to the lads, was I? No, no, no. Okay, so didn't get a game and stuff, and I wasn't getting a game. And then he, he called me in, and I think he said, Look, you ain't going to be playing. Uh, you can, if you can get yourself fixed up, you, you can go. Well, I said, All right, no. Well, he said, uh, He said, if you, don't fucking, if you don't get yourself fixed up fairly quickly, you'll be out there fucking running until it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it a little bit of a difficult? See, not, you, you was your teammate, and now all of a sudden he's your man. Teammate, and, and, I, and, I, and I always, I always going to work with Rhino. You know, I ne- never, had, never had an issue with any of my time at Rhino. But he, he was a manager, mate, and he, and he, and he had, he had a vision of for the club, and you know, he wanted me. I mean, I, mean, I wanted to, I wanted to play. So he, mm. he was never, he was never going to get an issue from me. I mean, I, I, I signed for the first club I spoke to, so it, I was never going to kick my feet and I dig my heels in. I mean. Mm. I think Northampton bid, Northampton bid eighty grand for me. I know that's, I know it's, it's it might have been a, a bit of a blatant situation, but to be fair, he's his manager now. He sort of turned that player head off there, and he's just gone right on the manager now, and that's that, and it. So yeah. you've yeah. got to respect it in a way, although it wasn't the news you wanted to hear. I I I, I hadn't got an issue with it, mate. You, like you, you learn as you go on in football, and the the only disappointing thing was, mate, I'd I'd, I'd look because the, the taste with the cup runs and that, mate, I'd have loved to experience. A success with a promote, you know, a promotion. Because because you see what the place is like. Like it's full when you play Arsenal, Chelsea, the noise. And I, I, I was I watched the playoff game with Derby when I because because I, I was just on trial. Then I watched it and I thought, 
you know, and and I see you see the scenes when they get promoted and stuff like that. And I, I I'd love loving just to be. And I think I think I was probably twenty. I think I was probably twenty six, twenty seven. I think when I left Millwall, and I, I you know, if you're coming into your, your sort of prime years, you know what I mean. I think when you're starting to. And I went, I went to Northampton. I had a couple of blinding years there. We got promoted. And I scored a lot of goals and stuff like that. So I, I think I could have contributed. Do you know what I mean? Like these, these guys that were coming through were exceptional, really. No question. And I, I, I probably wouldn't, have, probably wouldn't have started or get into the team. But I think I could have contributed something as, as part of a squad. You know, you feel like you're coming into. But look, that that was what they had to do. And managers up and down the country do that. Um, and, and and when I went, I mean, he showed his personal side. I think when I, you know, when I went, I was speaking to Northampton. He pulled me and said, "Look, if it's not right for you, you and your family, <clears throat> don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You know, I need, uh, you know, I know what I've said, but um, but it was, but it was fine. It was, you know, it was. They 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 had a Wembley appearance, I think, the year before in the playoffs, and and they were a club that were, you know, they, they were in. I think the two playoff finals on the bounce, they they went up, and then so they were a club that. We're sort of moving forward a little bit, but it, yeah, it's always hard. I mean, I, I left a bigger club. I, I left a, I left a bigger club that had massive potential to be a Premiership club, you know. But no, you yeah. made the right mate. Did what was best for you, and you um, you're still up in not uh, Northampton, aren't you these days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still up here, mate. Still up. Been here, been here since I moved up, and yeah, kids, kids are in school and and, and everything. Well, not school left. They're walking now, and you know they've done the schooling up here, so. Nice little place, mate. I'm on the M1, so you you know, hour from Elton Birmingham, Elton North London. So yeah, yeah, we, we stayed up here, mate. So yeah, it's good. What are you up to now? Uh, just I, I'm only thing, mate. I, I do. I'm back in with a civilian life, mate. So I, I do uh, uh, work with a builders merchant. So you know, building supplies to people. So tip, tipping the forklifts and that. So it's Monday, Friday for me, mate. So. I do like four one shifts, so I've got my afternoons free and you know, time with the family and stuff like that, which is, you know, which is what you're after. I mean, fo- football career is, you know, twenty. I done I done twenty years as a pro, and it's I mean the, the best job in the world. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot involved in the travel and being away. You know, when I played for Bristol Rovers, I was, you know, I, I had to spend time down there and do the commute and stuff like that. So it's it's nice now you take all that stuff for granted, being at home and spending time. So, yeah, yeah, I, I enjoy that now, mate. So, yeah, everything's good. Well, so you had a, you had a 20-year career. I, I think it's safe to say there was never a dull moment from your four years at Millwall. No, no, and, no. Um, a, a, a great pick, memories, Dan. Honestly, great memories. It, it's pick a couple of standout memories. The Chelsea go aside. You can not you can count that one, but uh, the other ones. <laughs> I, th- I, th- I, think, I think my first goal, I think my first goal at the... Uh, at the day in the fourth season, I scored against uh, I scored against Burnley. Um, my first goal, it was, good, it, was, it was actually a good goal, twenty five yard top bin. I remember that. You know, your first goal, you, you, you dream of that. Your first professional goal when you're a young kid. And uh, also, mate, I scored. I, I, I scored at Goodison Park. I scored because we beat Everton up there four two. Taylor onto Savage, one on one here. Savage might really round off Bill Wolf. No! It's 4-2, Millwall in the third round of the Coca-Cola Cup, Everton are out. The arms raised aloft on the Millwall bench, and Dave Savage has killed off Everton's chances. And it's another great night for Mick McCarthy and for Millwall. Some, some, some great memories, and I mean, individual games along the way. There's lows, I mean, we've talked about the highs and the lows, but the fourth season... You know, going to places like Molyneux, and we, you know, we, 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 we played some really good stuff in that force. It was great to be a part of. It. We played some really good football, and we, and, you know, we obviously we just we, we fell short and tailed away. But there were some great, great moments in that in that first year. If you could pick three mill players, players so to go to choose, go to choose the club, the club yeah? Yeah. who would they be? Choose their club. Uh, well, don't have to be a Tuesday. <laughs> Give me any day of the week you like. You, you, your choice of three for good company. Uh, Sparky, I'd have, to, I'd, have, I'd have to take. I'd have to take Sparky. And they can't all be Irish. No, no, he he <laughs> he 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 he'd be one, mate. He'd be one because obviously we were we, we we were quite close. Yeah. Uh, who have we got? Who was the club? I'd probably say Alex Alex Ray. Alex Ray, Alex Ray's good, good crack on the night out. I would, I would, I would say Ben, but it's dangerous, mate. I, I, I don't. I, I, it, it's, uh, I, 
<laughs> you don't know when you're going to make it home. Uh, I'd probably say maybe Andy Roberts. Andy, Andy Roberts yeah. could crack on a night out. Andy Roberts could crack. Mate, honestly, it's been an absolute pleasure, though. So you come highly recommended to me, mate, and I've loved every minute of it. So great four years at Mirwall, highs and lows, but yeah. that night Chelsea, mate, will always go down in history as an iconic night. And well done to you, and thanks for, thanks for your time. No, pleasure, mate. Day. Pleasure, mate. Really enjoyed it. it. Cheers, buddy. Good man, Dave. Thank Cheers, you. Mate. Take care, bud. Bye-bye.